If you'd like to see how to add information to a parts table, click over here. If you'd like to see how to retrieve information from a parts table, click over here. If you'd like to see how to update information in a parts table, click over here. If you'd like to see how to delete information in a parts table, you can click over here. You can click over here to follow me on Twitter and even here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. But if you don't click anywhere, this video will continue just like the rest of my videos in that pattern. So, let's get to it. So, hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tony Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over Parse. Uh, and so, I know I've already done a chatting app tutorial, but now I'm also going to be going over just how, plain how to use Parse. Uh, and so now I'm going to be going over a few main things, which are retrieving data from the Parse database. Then I'm going to teach you how to actually upload data into the Parse database. I'm going to teach you how to uh, uh, update some information in that uh, table and also delete some information from that table. And let's get started right now. And so first of all, as you can see, I've already logged into Parse and I'm, I've gone to my dashboard. Now I'm not going to go over how to do that because that should be very self-explanatory and I believe you can also log in with Gmail or even GitHub or even Facebook. So that should be quite easy for you to do. Uh, and yeah, th so now what I'm going to just do is in our dashboard, you see up here, there's a create a new app button. So I'm just going to click on that. I'm going to create my put my face a bit smaller actually I'm just going to cover right there uh, so I'm going to call this new app um, parse tutorial okay I'm going to create it and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this quick start button let's click on it make our face a bit smaller and now, what I'd always recommend for you to do is click on the data button. Uh, now, you can choose any of these, but since I'm developing for iOS, I'm just going to click on mobile, iOS. Now, you can choose between Objective-C, Swift, or if you're using Xamarin, C Sharp. So, I'm just going to click, select Swift. Let's just click on the new project button. The existing project button will be an entirely different video. Then what you're going to do is you're going to click on this blue button here. Download the blank Xcode project. Now you can just uh, go over here and wait for it to be done downloading. And so now, as you can see, I've extracted it. And so what I can do is, I believe, yes, what you do, once you extract it, go into it, double click on Parse Starter, Starter Project Swift, and then double click the Xcode project. This should open up the actual Xcode project that you are developing for. Now what I'm just quickly going to do is come over here, and since I'm actually developing for uh, iOS 9, not 9.1, I'm going to set it to 9.0. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do, as you can see, this has already been set up by Parse, so it's a nice app delegate, uh, I believe. Yep, all our frameworks should already be Im uh, imported, uh, as you can see, whatever is required. Uh, and so all we need to do is enter in our application ID uh, and we should be good to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into this parse quick start page. We're going to copy this little code that they gave us. We're going to go into application did finish launching with options. And we're going to take this little part where it says uncomment and fill in with your parse credentials. Parse.set application ID, your application ID and your client key paste it in and now effectively what we've done is we've told parse that yes we are this person connecting to this table and so we want access and so parse is going to be like yeah sure and now we can access uh, that entire parse database uh, and so that'll be good so now we can go to into any table uh, retrieve add update and even delete 
So now, in order to actually use these features, I'm going to be really simply just using the print commands for now, not creating any fancy UI. This is due to the fact that I just want to explain how parse works too. I don't want to overcomplicate you with a UI and this and that. This is for beginners, of course. Uh, so what I'm going to do is in our muted load function, let's uh, demonstrate adding a row. But wait, what are we adding a row to? Well, in order to solve this, let's go back to parse, sorry, uh, and let's click on this core button. Then let's click on add class. Make sure this is set to custom, and let's just set this class name to messages. Now let's add a column to this table. Let's make sure this is a string, and let's name this the message. And let's also add a column and name it the number, meaning which uh, actually, oh, sorry, this has to be a number. Uh, so this is a number called number. Now I'm just going to take this column over here that we just created, number, and drag it over here beside message. You don't need to do this, it's completely optional, but, you know, it's more clean and easy for you to see. Okay, message, number, message, number. Actually, you could even put the number before the message because that makes more sense because that's the unique. Not the unique because the object, you get the point. Anyway, continuing. Now, how do we add a row into this table? It's simple. First of all, what we need to do is we need to define this row. How do we define this row? We create a var object, which is equal to a new pf object. But there's a problem. We need an initializer. And so if I do this, as you can see, it fills in this initializer class name for me. And so I'm going to give it the class name messages. Because as you can see over here, we gave it messages. And of course, Xcode has to load because it's really, really slow. Okay. So now that we've de declined, uh, de sorry, declined, declared our object, what we can do is we can say object dot set object. Now we're going to say we want the message named my name is Tanry Bakshi for the message, and for the uh, and so we're going to also set number one for the number and this should actually work now what's going to happen it's going to set the message to my name is Henry Bakshi it'll set the number to one of course I'm not going to go to the actual database uh, and find the number yet because that would be way too much coding uh, but this is just a simple explanation of how you'd uh, actually save into parse but there's a problem, we're only setting objects, we're not actually saving into the table. So in order to do this, let's force try object.save, because I know that in my case this will work. But in your case, you can implement error handling, because again, error handling is an entirely separate video. For now, I'm just trying to teach you how to use parse. Now if I make the deployment target my iPhone, and if I run, now again, I'm not going to stream my iPhone to my Mac, because you only really need to see what it prints out, not even prints out at this stage, whatever uh, comes over here. So as you can see, this should eventually run. And if all goes well, it should give us this warning. Perfect. So now if we go to parse and we reload by clicking on this little refresh button here, as you can see, number one, my name is Tanibakshi. We have inserted this row into our table. Now what else can we do? Uh, let's take this for an example. Now that we've added a row, uh, again, I'm going to keep this um, uh, code in the actual source code. Or actually, never mind. Let's just do this, because we don't want to save it again. I'm just going to comment that out. Okay, so now that we've actually added a row, Let's try retrieving the information that's already in the database. Now, how do we do this? First of all, let's just declare a query, which is equal to a new PF query. And of course, again, we're going to give it a class name, aka table name. And I'm going to again give it messages. 
Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I think it's a, uh, yeah, var objects is equal to query dot find objects. And of course, we have to force try this. Now, this is an array of PF objects, but what if we wanted to print it out in a special way or we needed this information in a normal string string or string any object dictionary? Well, in order to do this, what I do is say var final objects is equal to string any object. And this is actually an array of this. And so now we can loop through the actual objects. And so what's going to happen is we're going to say final objects dot append a blank dictionary. Then final objects, the last element, meaning final objects dot count minus one, specifically message will be set to j, which is the uh, loop parameter that we made, dot value for key message as string. Then what we can do is we can do the same thing, final objects, final objects dot count minus one, meaning the last dictionary, we're setting the number to j dot value for key number as a string. So uh, effectively what we're doing is we're taking the message from the specific object from this array, converting it to a string and putting it into a final into the final objects dictionary, which is the last dictionary in an array of more dictionaries of values from this object's array. Sounds complicated right now, but once I print out the final objects, won't really seem this hard. Now it should actually print out the my name is Henry Bakshi number one. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake. I must have caught that. Integer, not string. A number can't be a string unless you. That. And as you can see, it has worked perfectly. And now in order to prove that this actually does work, I'm going to add another row from within parse. Number two, message. Um, hi, I'm new here. Okay, so now if I run this app, it should give us exactly what I typed in. As you can see, it retrieves all the contents from the parse table. Now, we can effectively retrieve all rows. But what about updating a row? Well, that's also quite simple. In order to update, yeah, update a row, all we need to do is say, okay, first of all, what we're going to do, create a query. So this is going to be a new query, a uh, PF query, of course, not error code, query, of class name messages. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to say query dot where key or sorry, not this one, where key equal to, in my case, where the number is one, let's update the message to yay, it worked. So first of all, we've said the query should look for a key number where it's one. So now let's get the object value of that by doing query dot get first object. So what this is effectively going to do, it's going to get the object value of the actual row. It'll basically get the row where number is equal to one. Or at least the first row where number is equal to one. Not sure about if there's any others, it'll just get the first one. 
Now uh, I'm just going to make this a let object, so it stops giving me a uh, uh, warning. And so now I'm going to say object dot set object. Let's just say let's just say the new message is yay, it worked. And let's set this for the message, of course. And now let's save this onto our parse server. And theoretically, this should go to the parse table, update, my name is Tenen Bakshi, into yay, it worked. So let's actually run this code. Okay, no exception. And if we go over here and refresh, it changed. Now, we're going to do the last thing, and this is actually very, very fun. It's basically just updating with a little bit of a twist. So what we're going to do now is we're going to delete a row. So now, how do we delete a row, you may ask? Well, actually, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to copy this much code from updating, and I'm just going to say object dot delete. It was literally that simple. And now it'll delete, yay, it worked. Because we're deleting wherever the number is one. Or at least the first row where number is one. And so now, if I refresh, number one is gone. And it worked. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, and really quickly, yeah, that was actually pretty much it for this tutorial. Again, if you enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, or email me at tajimanagemail.com. My email will be in the description. If you have any questions, suggestions, ideas, concerns, pretty much anything from math to science to computing to algorithms, anything, uh, and I will surely, almost definitely, get back to you on that. Uh, you can also email me a video question of you saying a question, and I will cer almost certainly feature that in one of my next videos uh, and maybe even answer that. So, also subscribe to my channel if you like my cotton, you want to see more of it, uh, or if you just plain are new to the channel or you like my channel, please subscribe, that really does help. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at Tajimani if you'd like to, where you can get all the latest updates, uh, maybe even some sneak peeks towards my next videos or my future ones, and that's going to be it. Goodbye.